So I'm uh, Ronnie Alexander, and I'm the chairholder of the Kobe University UNESCO Chair on Gender and Vulnerability in Disaster Risk Reduction and Support. And I'd like to echo um, the comments of those who have gone before me and say that this is really a special and important opportunity. And thank you um, for the chance to be here and to hear what you're doing and to hopefully connect in new and different ways. Let me just tell you briefly uh, about our UNESCO chair. It's, uh, I've been listening and thinking that there are various differences. And one of the big differences is that our uh, UNESCO chair is located in the University Gender Equality Office. And I'm the director of that office. Um, I'm a professor in the Graduate School of International Cooperation Studies. And my field is, is peace studies. And of course, gender equality is uh, very much related to peace and peace creation and peacemaking. But uh, because our UNESCO chair is in the, the gender equality office, it means that it has a uh, gender focus, and we can be certain about that. But it's also hard to connect with, we don't have our own courses, we don't have our own um, established faculty, academic or res research program. Uh, and another difference that you'll see in a minute is our relationship, I think, with our partner institutions in uh, several other Asian countries. But the purpose of uh, our UNESCO chair, and I'll go through this just very quickly, So I think you, you might be aware that in 1995, there was a very large uh, earthquake in Kobe. And so it was the first urban large scale earthquake in a very long time in Japan. And Kobe University was right in the middle of that. So uh, since that time, we've been devoted to doing research and promoting uh, disaster studies. But I'm, I regret to say that Kobe University as a university, like most other universities and institutions in Japan, uh, doesn't really think gender equality is particularly important. And although lots of documents talk about gender equality and disaster, there's very little uh, real understanding of what that means. And it wasn't until after our uh, UNESCO chair got started that we realized how, how much work we really need to do just to uh, start the conversation. Our partner institutions are universities in Malaysia, Indonesia, Taiwan, and Thailand, along with uh, Mercy Malaysia, which is a humanitarian uh, NGO, international NGO located in Malaysia. And almost everything we do, we do together. These are the tasks that we set for ourselves. And we're now in our fourth year. Just yesterday, I sent off our application for renewal to UNESCO. So um, if those people who make those decisions in UNESCO are still here, uh, we want another four years to show you what we can do. But in the meantime, we have a research program, education program, and hopefully um, establishing guidelines for gender sensitive disaster support and also policy recommendations and expanding, expanding our network throughout the region and further. Our education program is, has been the most successful of our programs and it's uh, held in, in, well, before COVID anyway, it was held in Indonesia at Gajamada University for two weeks and 
there were student participants from Japan and Indonesia and Taiwan and a few other countries as well. And our partner institutions um, also participate in terms of serving as faculty for this. And it's a two week, excuse me, classroom study, but also field study where the students go in mixed country groups and they, they do some field work in a community that was relocated after a, a volcanic eruption. And then they're given a task uh, to solve. And students who participated in this program have gone on now to uh, do graduate work and to have an interest in gender and disaster where they really didn't have one to begin with. So we've had quite a lot of interest and success. And since uh, the beginning of COVID, last year we did a two-day conference. We had 60 students from five countries talking about the situation in their country, what from the perspective of gender and vulnerability, what they think ought to be done, what they can do. And this was, was very stimulating for all of the students. It had very, very favorable comments afterwards. And uh, this year in, in November, we'll spend a month with online groups of students from these five different countries and they'll work together. Um, and our theme for this year is inequality focusing on the COVID-19 vaccine. So this again relates to a lot of the themes that many of you been, have been mentioning in terms of, of COVID-19 and what's going on in the world now. Uh, quickly, our research program, we've had a very hard time uh, getting institutional support within Kobe University, but Every year we've had an international seminar with our partners, and I'm happy to say that our partners didn't really understand why gender was important at the beginning, but um, have begun to really be interested and committed. Hopefully, we'll be able to publish an edited volume from Springer by the end of this fiscal year in March, um, talking about different aspects of gender and vulnerability in the different countries uh, that we partner with. And hopefully that will form the basis of guidelines that we're trying to uh, establish. So um, in terms of problems, as I, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, there's not very much understanding of why gender is important. And uh, or why, why research should be gender focused. And, and that's a, a big obstacle. Of course, Japan as a country has that problem too. And again, because we, we're not a academic faculty, we, we have limited recognition within the university and we've now have a scheme to change that. Uh, that I'll talk about just very briefly in a minute. Uh, and I'm, I'm interested in perhaps many of you also have this problem, and I think somebody spoke to it just a few minutes ago, but we have a variety of disciplines and worldviews and approaches. And we're pretty good at talking with each other, and we're pretty good at lining up our different approaches, but we haven't really gotten very good at actually integrating them and figuring it how, out how we can use these different approaches and different, different areas and different worldviews and put them together to make safer societies and more resilient societies. Uh, it's a very, very difficult um, thing to do, but, but it's turning out to be an interesting and important task. Uh, and uh, I echo the funding problem. It's very hard to get funding and our university is, um, is generous, but cautious. Hopefully we'll be able to do 
to do better. And as I said earlier, the education program has been successful. We've had a little bit of success with the research and um, our largest success of late is that the, we have a new university pr uh, president who is more concerned about money than almost anything else, but we managed to get approval for another four years from him. So that's uh, something to our credit. In terms of the future in the next four years, uh, at, for the first four years, we've emphasized gender and vulnerability, and we're adding well-being to that. And that will give us um, a little bit more breath, but also allow us to do a uh, study on COVID-19. And hopefully we'll be able to do it in each of our partner institutions and work together on that. And that hopefully will make um, a contribution to, to uh, helping us see how women have been affected differently in all of the different places and to solving some of the, the huge setbacks that have happened uh, during these last two years. We're also in the process of redesigning the research structure within Kobe University so that we'll have more support within the university, be able to involve more students. And we've added some new affiliates. Hopefully WHO is going to be uh, there's an office in Kobe, and hopefully they'll be partnering up with us. And also UNDRR, um, we're hoping to have them as a partner. So uh, thank you very much. I think that concludes my presentation. And again, thank you for having me. And I appreciate uh, being involved with you. And I also, um, we're a member too of the Global Network and hope we can be more and more involved. Thank you very much.